How you guys doing today? Hooray, hooray. We're hey, here to talk about everybody. things. We're the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Luke. I'm Joe. And today we bring you stuff. Um, for example, a carjacker killed himself when the shotgun went off as he tried to smash the window. Uh, officers investigating the, Reese, the death of Reese Ramsey Johnson said they were satisfied there was no third party involvement as they closed the probe until his killing. Witnesses who saw the 22 year old dying from gunshot wounds in the street outside of Lloyd's Bank in Sydenham on Sunday, September 8th, said his own gun may have gone off when he used it to hit a car window. Oh, God, fuck. Yeah. Opening the inquest at Southwark Coroner's Court on Tuesday, September 26th, Dr. Andrew Harris confirmed the police investigation had now ended. Like, if anybody out there doesn't realize that movies aren't real. Yeah, it's like... And that you shouldn't... Like, if you if you do legally own a gun and for some reason you have to break something, do not hit it with your gun while it's loaded. <laughs> Ever. That's dumb. Yeah. Um, it, it's just... It's so stupid. Um, Jesus Christ. A post-mortem examination found the cause of death was shotgun wounds to the chest. Video footage taken at the time showed another masked man shouting, he shot himself. He's fucking shot himself as he crossed over Mr. Ramsey Johnson's dying body. <laughs> like. Oh my God. He that's that's horrible. Himself. He fucking uh, shot himself. It's just God. That's so fucked up. It's just so stupid, though. A group of guy, a shopkeeper on the high street, told my London a group of guys were sitting in a car by the bank, and a big guy came up to them with a shotgun. They all got out of the car and ran. So the guy decided to damage the car with the back of the shotgun. As he was hitting the windows, the gun went off and he shot himself. That's what we've been told. Yeah. And no members of Mr. Ramsey Johnson's family attended the brief court hearing. <sighs> Ouch. Yeah. That was in the UK. That was in the UK. Yeah. Most of these stories like this generally come from the UK for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but, you know, why? I, I don't why know. Why do you do this? I still remember. I mean, you do realize that car windows are designed to take that kind of abuse, right? Designed to take impact. Because, you know, if, if they just broke at the slightest bit of, of provocation, they wouldn't be safe enough to put in cars. Like, what yeah. is wrong with you? I, I don't know. I mean, I... I when you you were like back when I it was part of being uh, able to get licensing for hunting yeah because yeah. Of, I was under the the age I think you have to be born before like 1970 or something I don't remember what the cutoff was but um uh, weapons like gun safety is a big part of that yeah and like you should never even like you you never use a gun like a walking stick you never hit your gun on something you never like why? Even, Why even using it to brace yourself when you're standing up or something like that. Nothing, nothing like that. It's this. It's stupid. It's oh, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing to me that there's just, that all common sense from this dude flew out the fucking window. Yeah. You know, like like. Well, again, it's the movie thing. You see, you you see in movies where they take a gun and start bashing something with the butt of the gun. Yeah. And it, you know, it's perfectly fine. They bash the door open. That's because that's a fucking prop. That's yeah. not a real gun. You hit a gun hard enough, if that fucking firing pin slips... You're fucked. That's it. The gun's going off. Yep. That's a great scene in The Joker, too. After he gets the gun, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing and shoots a hole in his goddamn wall. Yeah, yeah. Um, woman claims adopt the girl she abandoned was really an adult dwarf who wanted to kill her family. This one is, is kind of weird. Um, this one's a fucking movie. Look yeah, like. it is. Uh, basically, a U.S. woman was accused of abandoning her daughter she claimed she adopted in 2010 was, in fact, an adult suffering from dwarfism who tried to kill the family. Um, basically, these two people, Christine Barnett and her ex husband Michael Barnett, were charged with neglect after leaving the Ukraine-born Natalie Grace in an apartment shortly before the family moved to Canada in 2013, which is one hell of a way to abandon somebody. Yeah. Like, dude, like, like, it's one thing to just up and move to, like, another city, another state. You move to a whole other country. <laughs> you said, the only it, way, The only way you could get any worse is if you move to another continent. I was just going to say, yeah. Right? Like, because we're not leaving planets yet. Somewhere uh, without extradition laws. <laughs> basically, the, uh, I guess this, she really is 22. I don't know what's going on, but, uh, like, the, it, it's actually not exactly clear um, but apparently, Natalie is three feet tall, has trouble walking, and in a defense echoing the 2009 horror from The Orphan, Barnett says Natalie was 22 years old when they left her behind, not nine, as court documents claim. 
According to the letter from the family doctor, which Mr. Barnett provided to a local TV station, Natalie's date of birth at the time of his adoption was clearly inaccurate. The letter, which Indiana University Health has not confirmed as genuine, states that she had adult teeth and had begun menstruating. Um, it also states the girl had made a career of perpetuating her age facade and was diagnosed with sociopathic personality disorder. Apparently, they had this girl's age legally changed from 8 to 22 in 2012, making her legal date of birth September 4th, 1989, which I didn't even know you could do. Like, that's insane to me. I mean, I guess it's got to be something with, you know, you don't know what age the person is when they come into the United States. Right, right. They're adopted. Uh, Miss Barnett has told Daily Mail TV that she attempted to harm other members of the family while she was under their care, hiding knives on couches, talking about how she was going to kill family members, putting chemicals in the coffee, jumping out of moving cars, smearing blood on mirrors. She was doing things you could never imagine a little child doing. She was standing over people in her sleep. She would be standing in the middle of the room and say, I'm waiting for the right time. <laughs> um, Natalie was in and out of mental health facilities, but was left in an apartment in Lafayette, Indiana in 2013 when the Barnetts moved to Canada to support their son Jacob in further education, which Jacob Barnett was a, uh, ch- a child prodigy who was subject of a 2012 episode of CBS 60 Minutes. At the age of 12, Jacob was taking university math classes and is currently pursuing a PhD in quantum gravity at the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics. Go him. Um, no one really knows what happened to Natalie since she was left in Lafayette, but she did uh, get evicted from that apartment in 2014. So, there's a three-foot mentally unstable little person running around that just fucking wants to stab people in the ankles. And put chemicals in their coffee, and yeah, like, it's it's okay. I That's kind of terrifying. A little bit, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I found this story... Uh, mm-hmm. And this this is one not even Luke has heard because uh, I just found this story as we were sitting here. Man sues Apple because his iPhone turned him gay. Let that sink in for a minute. God, just this um, sounds exactly like something we read. I I just, just fuck people. A man in Russia has launched a lawsuit against Apple after he alleged that his phone turned him gay. I'm not even going to attempt to uh, remove remu, resu, resume love yeah. once one million rubles, which is around sixteen thousand five hundred British pounds, because of course this is you know, after he was given sixty nine gay coins of cryptocurrency instead of Bitcoin he had been expecting. The money came with the message in English, don't judge without trying. He did what he was told, tried it, and is now in a relationship. He wrote in court papers, I thought, indeed, how can I judge something without trying it? And decided to try same-sex relationships. I can say after the patches of two months that I'm mired in intimacy with a member of my own sex and can't get out. I have a steady boyfriend and I don't know how to explain it to my parents. After receiving the aforementioned message, my life has changed for the worse and will never be normal again. Yeah. That's real. I. Let's nuke Russia. Okay. Just... Yeah. No. I'm, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I blame Putin. Um, I don't know how he's connected this, but I blame Vladimir Putin. Razumov he's putting chemicals in the water to make the freaking frogs gay. <laughs> has accused Apple of manipulatively pushing me towards homosexuality and sending him the gay coins in 2017 and was suing because Apple of moral suffering coins. and harm to mental health. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. My, the app was created by a third party, but he believes Apple has a responsibility for programs they host. How? I just I, fucking. He's literally the person that you hear about of. How do you know you're not gay if you don't try it? That went. Well, all right. I guess I don't. That's not how it fucking works. Oh fuck! Oh god! I just. It's it's. I just don't know how to react to this. I, I saw that headline and thought, oh no, I have to read this. That's and then so as we were sitting here and I was talking about other things and I read it and I'm like, what? <sighs> so yeah, that that gets all of my what. It sounds um, like Russia. Yep. Yep. Just, Unfortunately it does, doesn't it? Like, ugh. I I don't know, dude. That, that was just dumb. That's just, phone turned me gay. Give ruples. No, that's not how that's not how reality works, you stupid fuck. He got gay coins that said, "Hey, don't knock until you try it." And he went, "Well, all right. You have a point. I will try it." And then now you like it and 
Turns How- out dick and ass does feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I am now gay with men boyfriend. Oh, I hate you. I I hate you, Russia. In a committed relationship. A That's the part that kills me. For two months it's like now. I legitimately found love and happiness and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is more the guy was, you know, in a relationship. He's gay and realized, oh, fuck, I'm going to go to prison because Russia is a fucking backwards ass goddamn country run by a, di- a fucking horrible dictator. Yeah. Uh, and this is his way of trying to not be fucking put in prison and, and possibly killed. <sighs> so in that case, yeah, fine. Do it. Sue Apple. Fuck so, em. yeah, let's, let's bomb Russia. Mm-hmm. Let's just... We don't need Russia. We, we have decided that is a group of white people we do not need. <laughs> Slav. Yeah, we, we don't need those guys. So um, bye-bye. We're going to wipe you off the fucking... Uh, at least the fucking people in control. Goddamn fucking asshole. Let me. He actually was joking at some event about meddling in the next U.S. election. Oh. <laughs> Which, I mean, of course you're, he's going to. Like, this, he already has. This shouldn't surprise like, yeah. anyone. All like, right. of course they're going to. Just All like, right. We meddle in elections. It just happens. It's just what we do. And Russia's really, really good at creating bot accounts to spread bullshit. Apparently so, yeah. All right. So, we, uh, what else do we want to talk about? Yeah, well, there's one other really dumb thing. It's it's not a huge story, but it's EA, so fuck EA. Uh, EA opened up registrations for the FIFA 20 Global Series, which is their big competition for FIFA. Right. Um, for year 2020, obviously. <laughs> The new game just dropped recently, I think. Uh, right. However, those trying to register noticed that the sign-up page displayed personal details of players who had already done so. They saw usernames, emails, addresses, and dates of birth, among other information. Really? Jesus. Um, wow. Yeah. It seems that the, the problem affected high-profile... Uh, it seems as though the problem affected high-profile players and professionals as well as anyone who signed up. After reports of these uh, issues emerged, EA took down the page to investigate and said it would provide updates as soon as possible. Uh, the They just gave them a statement. Uh, on Twitter, we're well uh, we're aware of a potential issue affecting the registration page page for the EA Sports FIFA 20 Global Series that went live earlier today. We take these matters seriously, and we immediately took down the page while we investigate the matter. We'll share updates as soon as possible. That's hilarious. I thirty minutes is all it took because. I mean, it's a fucking worldwide phenomenon, FIFA, so 30 minutes and those... Why? 1,600 players were affected. Just why? Uh, And they're taking steps to contact them and help protect their accounts. You fucking retards. God damn it, EA. Why why can't you do anything right? (laughs) I don't don't know anything about, um, like web design but i got to imagine the first thing you do is make it so the login details and personal information of other people don't show up when someone I mean, clicks create new that's, profile that's kind of like <laughs> I think web that's design number one that's but it's kind of yeah that's, that's kind top, of at least top pretty five basic, right? pretty basic uh like i don't know i just why oh my god you know it's still a better response than the esa has had uh, for uh, when they leaked all of their all of the um, uh, personal information from uh, the media attendees of the last E3. Oh my god! They never ever like did anything about that. Oh. But yeah, that sounds just like the ESA. Oh. Fucking greedy assholes! I I can't wait for us to like get rid of them. I you know I don't. I, at the same time, I don't want to because that's going to put government regulation, like, holding, like, control over video games. Right. But, but that's going to be what they get yeah, that's what, what, I'm they, saying. Like, what they're doing. Like, with what with, with the kind of missteps they're taking lately, with loot it's going to happen and anyway. Gambling yeah. gambling and shit. Like, it's going to happen anyway. Like, I 100% see it just, oh, by the way, we're fucking totally this is doing gambling, this. gambling, and if you aren't regulating it properly, the government will step in. Yep. The government. <laughs> government. And then that's only one more step between them just going, hey, this is the content you can and can't have. Yeah. Like, oh, no, this is too violent or there's too much sex in this or whatever. Yeah. Just just let me get Cyberpunk before that happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Please, right. I want Cyberpunk 2077. 
<laughs> All right, so we got that out of the way. Yeah, the big thing. Fuck EA. Again, some more, all the time. Never stop. Warner Brothers released a new movie. Uh, I'm sure people have heard about fucking uh, The Joker came out. We saw that last night. Yeah, we did. We went, um, it was kind of an off the cuff thing. We weren't doing D&D yesterday uh, mm-hmm. because one of our players was like, you know, I don't fucking feel like it. And we're like, you know what? We dig that. So we're not going to do it either. Yeah. Um, and so we all stayed home and Luke messaged me like, hey, you want to go see Joker? I'm like, all right. <laughs> I knew it was coming out. And then I had watched, uh, I saw that Jeremy Johns and somebody else um, had put up reviews. Right. And were like, it's coming out. You know, said something about, you know, it's, or actually, I think it was Fat Man on Batman or Batman, Fat Man Beyond that they said it's coming out in a few days. Saw those reviews and was like, wait a minute. I wonder. And checked it. And sure enough, it released Thursday. And I don't know if it's something that the theater is doing or maybe it's something with new releases. Yeah. But they had showings from like 4 p.m. on instead right. of your typical like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, quote unquote, midnight showings, which they don't even do at midnight anymore. They do no. it a little earlier. Yeah. But this they were shown from four. We didn't see it. We still went and saw it at like nine. But yeah. um, it was I fucking I fucking dug it. It um, was good. No, um. I, I definitely did enjoy the movie. It was it's, one of those things that was uh, bizarre, is how I would describe it, but not like in a bad way. It uh, for a, it's I I guess it's gonna probably be a blockbuster. I think it's gonna make a shitload of money. Right. Um. It's not. It, it's definitely not your typical blockbuster movie. Obviously, it's it's a character piece. Yes. It's, it's like I think the director said something about turning comic book movies and what, you know, the expectations of what a comic book movie is and turning that completely on its head. Yeah. And that's exactly what this did. It's it's uses that framework of the Joker to tell this story about like mental health issues and um like societal issues and Yeah. Just I I fucking dug the hell out of the story. Yeah, um, I think if there's any one problem I have with it, and and this would be towards the end, and just keep in mind as we do with all our movies, we're gonna spoil the shit out of this. Yeah. Well, before we do spoilers, obviously we both like the movie. You should go see it. Yep. Go um, watch it. It's. Um, I will say, like, if you've got, uh, especially if you have any interest in like mental health issues and things, and this, I know he's probably not gonna listen to this, but this goes right to our buddy Jake. He 100 percent is somebody that I'm gonna be like. You need no, to go seriously, see go see this. Like yeah. it watching the movie, um, the and I'm not I, I took a couple classes of psychology, so I'm totally trained to uh diagnose and, and tell people what no, but it, it, <laughs> I saw things that like little stuff that I remember from those classes and from stuff like abnormal psych, um, ticks and the smoking and different things that I saw like immediately I was like, I remember that. I learned about this. It was like yeah. it was just awesome in that way. So if you have any interest in psychology, in things like that, in like mental health, this movie's great. And the fucking breakdown of care for mental health, like people with mental problems. Yeah. In our country specifically, of it, it just it all comes uh comes uh like it, it's shown and displayed in this movie really well. It yeah they definitely they definitely did a great job of that. Um, yeah. So you're uh, saying you're yeah the only real problem so we'll go spoilers now <laughs> that I have with it um, was at the end when they were all like everybody was cheering for him after they pulled him out of the police car and lay him on top and he gets yeah. up that I would say almost glorifies the it, mental illness you know which is like mental illness should not be something that's shamed yeah. but it's also not something we should glorify. It was you know? the sort of thing where the whole the whole backlash before the movie came out yeah. was like, oh, this is this is like there are going to be people who see this. Yeah. And rather than take it like a normal person would take it of to not uh, you can sympathize with the villain in this and the bad guy, um, but not idolize them. And there are going to be those like incels like. You yeah. know, the 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 cringy justifying their own the, terrible yeah see behavior. this and go see this is what I want to do this is yeah you know, and the end of the movie there is there is a scene where after he um 
you know, like I said, spoilers, he shoots the, the TV host. Yeah. And he's arrested. There's a riot going on that's essentially the the lower class people of Gotham have just had enough of yep. the wealthy. Yep, yep, yep. And they are just like it, it's a full on riot. They're burning they're burning cars in the streets, breaking into buildings, uh assaulting police officers, everything's happening. Yep. They bust him out. And he stands up on top of this squad car, and there's this whole crowd of people cheering with masks, like uh, 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 clown, clown masks. masks. Yeah, they're cheering for him and everything. And yeah, I, I agree with you. I think, I think that they that's something where, and I never would um, try and like restrict or like control someone's you know freedom of speech or art or whatever yeah but i don't know if i'd put that scene in there yeah or like we talked about there's there's stuff where he is uh delusional as well like he has fantasies in his head yeah throughout the movie and at the they kind of reveal those towards the end i kind of wish there was a scene where it's revealed that that was all fake yeah that he you know maybe he busts out of the the squad car or whatever um, but then it's like he's standing there and, you know, he has all this crowd and then it cuts to there's no crowd around him or something. Yeah. Or uh, it shows an angle where there's just nothing actually going on. Or as he's sitting there, like envisioning that yeah. it like pans out to him sitting in like a straight jacket into in a yeah. mental institution or something. I think that would have been more a little bit better uh, in in the case of like the, the issues that came up for this movie. But all in all, yeah, there's no – It it's – you know, there's going to be people that hate it for what yeah. it is. Yeah. But I think uh, – I, I think Jeremy John said it best when he's like – I people are going to check out of this movie as soon as he does – the first bad thing he does is almost in self-defense. Yeah. Until he chases someone down and guns them down, like empties a magazine – or a, a cha- empties the – the chambers of his gun into this guy who's already wounded trying to get away from him. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Johns is like right there. That's when I know a lot of people are going to cut out of this movie and yeah. decide they hate it. Yeah. And he's like, and I know why you're doing it. It's because you liked it. You yeah. liked seeing these just assholes. Justice porn, man. That, that, exactly. That was, that was, he's that like, was... and that's why some of you are going to go, no, this is awful. Because I did, watching that scene, my first thought was, fuck yeah. Kill that motherfucker. These fuckers are literally beating the shit out of him in the subway. That's like straight for up no, self-defense. For no good reason either. No. Yeah. Because he's got a nervous tick and he can't control his laughing. Right. Which was uh, awesome. I, I love that. Yeah. No, like I think that added um, a, uh, that added something to it that I never really thought we needed, I guess, in a way. I never thought of the Joker as that he can't control the laughter. Right. And then it's like, you see him, like he'll grab his throat cause it's painful. And that's a real thing. Yeah. That yeah. is a, uh, uh, that people have. And I don't know. It makes it, this movie constantly made me go back to like the Batman animated series and yeah. other points of the Joker. Yeah. And then just like, what if this Joker is, you know, became that Joker and yeah, like, yeah. the stuff he does and it just like puts a whole new light on it and it's like oh my god it, it it's like it adds a level of I don't know authenticity in a way yeah yeah or, yeah or maybe just I don't know well I don't know what it adds oh my god there's I think it's when he's on toward the end of the movie when he's on the talk show yeah and with De Niro who's fucking great I De Niro missed his calling as a late night host yeah right I I would love to turn on the TV and see Robert De Niro in place of like Jay Leno exactly or he's so good li- or literally <laughs> like I don't know who's another late night host Jay, Jim, James Corbin or whatever James Corbin oh, right although the... he's fine he's a funny fat guy but yeah I would <laughs> funny, love ha, ha, fat guy. I would love to see him on a late night somebody give Robert De Niro a late night talk show I mean I, I think you'd have to also give him lines but no no fuck it man he's not he's not a fuck let funny. Robert De Niro be day. Robert De Niro on a talk show. <laughs> HBO, give him a late night talk show. It would have to be HBO because yeah, Robert De Niro has the fucking money would do, or would put that shit. Yeah, forward. like it has to be HBO, and I bet you. I, I don't know why, but like it would be when he. Hit. But there's this like the Joker says, uh, "I had a bad day" or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and which is straight out of. Um, uh, one of the, the the famous comic where he, he constantly is talking about 
uh, every person's just one bad day away from being me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that, that's so good. It, just it hearing him say it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, like, no th- when De Niro, the, he's it, like first meets <laughs> meets him, Fleck, before he's really the Joker. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I run a clean show. No swearing, no sexual. Sh- <laughs> yeah. Hearing De Niro say that was like, okay. Really, buddy? It was really? good. Yeah, because, I mean, it's fucking Robert De Niro of exactly. all people, you know. He's got so many, what, gangster movies under his belt. He's got so many violent movies under his belt. It was so good. So many movies where he has said so many, so many dirty things. Yeah, no, it's, I, I run a clean show. And it's like, ha. It's, and the, I don't know. I just fucking it's so fucking good. I mean, like every part of the movie like, you feels know, real, really. Like yeah, like Joaquin Phoenix does this amazing job. He's of terrifying, just, but at the same time, you do feel for him. Yeah, you relate he's to a him. sympathetic. Like yeah, like they made the Joker into a sympathetic, humanizing character, and I think they did it without screwing up the mystery of his backstory yeah. too. Well, um, because they dragged out like he's at first like this is just a dude who's like down his luck. Yeah, he has some problems. He's, right. But he's uh, he, like they very early on show that he was in a mental institution. Right. Because he had issues. Right. Slamming his head up against the glass and stuff. But the underlying just how much he's messed up. Yeah. Is dragged out in little pieces throughout the movie. And by the end, yeah, you're you, like, you just get breadcrumbs. Oh, no. You get breadcrumbs yeah, of yeah, how yeah. fucked up he is. By the end, you're like, oh, oh, no, this man's. Oh, he's been really fucked up the whole time. Yeah. It's just like, it's that under the surface. And you really, you're like, no, he's just, you know, I mean, he's has problems and these people beat him. And then, oh, no. Oh, oh, oh no. He's oh, wait. fucking. He's really fucked. He's fucked up. I'm like, like, dude has paranoid, schizophrenic, whatever I mean, he has. He's like completely delusional. 100%. I don't know if he's paranoid schizophrenia because he's not. He they didn't show him like hearing voices or anything, right? But um, he's de- completely delusional. His mother also, yeah, adopted mother. We find out, but she had something. I think he's got the same thing. Um, um, where she creates his cre- yeah. basically created his own little world. Yeah. Um. I'm just really glad um, because at some points during the movie, they sort of hint that J- Thomas Wayne is his father. Oh, yeah. I'm that's really the... fucking glad they didn't go that way because if they had, that just would have fucked everything that was up. such a good, like, little twisty, like, you know, is it, is he, isn't he type thing? Where is, it, is, it, is it true? His mother. Is he, is he basically Bruce's older brother? Like, yeah. what is this shit? His mother is writing Thomas Wayne letters the whole, like, through the whole movie. Yeah. And then finally he reads one and, and in the letters she talks about, uh, you need, you know, we need help. I need you to help me take care of your son. Yeah. And he freaks out and they, yeah. they do a jump cut. And his mother's hiding in the bathroom. Yeah. And I won't talk to you. And she's saying, I won't talk to you until you calm down, until you're not until, so angry. Until you're not angry, yeah. And I didn't think of it then, but I think that's one of the first big hints towards, no, that he's violently crazy. He's yeah. done, he's gotten violent before. Because before that, the relationship between him and his mother is a little creepy sometimes. Yeah. Because yeah, he's it's like dating strange. her. Yeah. But I kind of took that as maybe it's like she's either convinced him that she can't get help from someone else or they can't afford a caretaker or whatever. Right. But um, mm-hmm. it's like, it's a little, like, but it's, it's a wholesome relationship. Like he's taking care of his mother and yeah. it doesn't seem nothing, nothing, no red flags there. No. Until not. this scene. Yeah. And, and it's like, like, Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's not, it's not always a happy, healthy relationship. <laughs> Yeah. And she um, tells him, you know, it, it, she's convinced that Thomas Wayne is his father and that she had a relationship and affair with Thomas Wayne. Like, and he's 100% convinced by her. Yeah. Um, it turns out that nope. that's not true. Never <laughs> Thankfully, happened. Yeah. That would have been weird. That would have been, that would have been weird. Like, like I, I feel like it would have, uh, I don't know. It would have just ruined it. It would have ruined a I mean, lot of things. It would have been the one thing. That like like everything anything else they changed from the Batman 
like origin and Joker yeah. origin. All of it's fine. Like yeah. really for this for this self contained thing. Yeah. Um the there's no there's no reason like that this couldn't be a separate origin of the Joker, a more realistic right. take on on the universe, yada yada. Like even the change to when his parent like Batman's parents are killed at the end, because they do that. They straight it's not the Joker who kills him, which is another thing I was glad about. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was hoping the, they weren't gonna go that road either. Yeah, it's during the riots where his parents are coming out of Zorro and they're shot in down Crime Alley, but it's not a mugging, it's someone who's like part of the riots who's the the big thing was it's the poor against the rich yeah and thomas wayne is the wealthiest person person in gossam yeah as well as running for mayor right and so the dude just kills him there's no it's not like give me your money yeah it's just bang bang you're getting what's you're getting what's fucking coming to you when yeah like he that. also tore the beads which i love that touch the yeah the, not the beads the uh Pearls. pearl necklace yeah and left thomas bruce wayne standing there uh I don't even remember. Oh, it, it's not. It, so it doesn't change anything too much. Right. But had it been where he ended up being like the secret half brother to Bruce, that would have been fucking stupid. Yeah, I would have. I would have hated that little twist. That would have been doesn't... where. That's it's, where it hits so... my my comic book slash Batman fandom. Yeah. And I go, no, you no, can't do bad, that. Bad, bad, bad. Go away. So I was hitting him with a newspaper. Yeah, bad, 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 bad. Like you bad, don't bad. have to have the Joker fall into a vat. I thought for sure they'd do the storyline where he's pulled in uh, to the mafia and ends up, you know, stuck in that trying to, you know. Navigate that while being. Well, yeah, just trying to um, survive, basically. And then they, you know, for whatever reason, he ends up falling in the vat and going crazy or whatever. But this this is even better, I guess. I, yeah, I, no, I, I, I kind of say I like this better. It, it feels like a less cliched thing. The one problem that I have with it is the same problem I have with um, the the show Gotham. Yeah. Where the Batman, Bruce Wayne, is a kid in that too, or now now like a teenager, young adult, um, is that I I don't I think in the Batman universe the best origin for most of the characters is they exist because Batman exists. Right. Because that brings in the I, I that brings in the question of should Batman exist? And I, I I've always loved that. I always yeah. like that's that's a big thing in the Dark Knight. Um is that, you know, you Batman kind of creates his own rogues gallery because he almost empowers the insanity. By yeah. being a, a man in a mask flying around. And if you have the Joker exist before that, it kind of ruins their relationship a little bit. But, again, this movie, it could totally, like, I, I had said before, I, I there's no way they could continue this into a Batman movie. I 100% take that back. They could. Yeah. Even though Batman, it would less be crime. And yeah. I think it would specifically be Batman would be against the Joker, against people like the joker right because right. it's a dude in a fucking clown mask that killed his parents the joker is the basically the uh poster child of this whole riot that happened that you know yep. kills bruce's parents yep 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 yeah, especially when he gets on live tv there on, on the thing and admits oh to killing the three just, wall street guys that's so that whole scene is good because he's he wasn't completely calm no he was still he was fidgety. He had that. He had he was that boiling. Nervous. He, he was. He, he. Yeah. It wasn't. He wasn't completely like composed. The, the Joker we we know and love is completely composed and in has control of his mania. Completely insane. But like he yeah. was. He kept going back and forth between that calm control. Yeah. And then he, you know, it, he'd have that little bit of boil over. Well, he'd yeah. scre he'd yell about you don't they don't give a shit about normal people like me, or and they, they yeah. just walk over top of me. If I was lying dead in the subway, no one would care. Right, they only right. care because it's these three uh, like these and, three and wealthy this is guys. And with Bruce, Ray, Bruce Wayne and all, or, or Thomas, Thomas Wayne, Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that and like it was still it was still that part that sympathetic part of like the downtrodden is still there and then ultimately when he's like i got one more joke for you and i was like oh here it comes yep. and he fucking ah uh, knock shoots knock. him in the head Boof. you get what's fucking coming to you murray yeah oh my god that that 
That was so... The violence in this movie, and there's not a lot. No, there's not. But the violence when the Joker actually... When he shoots the kids in the sub... The, well, the fucking young guys in the subway. Right. Um, he kill Like, every time they show violence, it's brutal and so Very fast. much. Very brutal. Almost satisfying in a way. Yeah, it's so... Because there's a tension, and then finally when it happens, it... Every time, and it there's legitimately... a justification too. A little right? bit, yeah. Like, like I, I, I don't feel there was any violence in this movie that was just for the sake of it. Oh, well, it's not. It's not like gratuitous or anything yeah. like that. It's it, the like he murders the tall dude, the other the other guy who works as a clown. Yeah, that was like. Well, that's because nowhere. he screwed him up. He screwed him over, though. Yeah, yeah but like, he was no threat to him at the time. He at wasn't the time, there. No, but it, it he was wasn't to... there to like, hey, I need my gun back. I'm going to beat the shit out of you. He legitimately came as like, hey, I, I, you know, I know, you know, I messed well, up. Well, no, Let's he came as try and get our story straight so we don't get arrested. Right. Which, which, which he came more as I'm covering my ass and I'm yes. trying to take advantage of your mental illness. by saying you're my boy, right? I don't. Maybe but you, but you have to remember illness, earlier, but... earlier in the movie, he was betrayed by the same guy. Well, the guy was covering his ass, it's right? Saying, you know, right. oh no, I didn't. He, he wanted to buy the and, gun, from and him. that's that betrayal that comes in, though. Because, sure, because the mean, way it's... he frames giving him the gun in the first place is I'm just it's, trying to I watch would out never, for you. I would never excuse someone for stabbing someone in the face with a pair of scissors. No, first. obviously not. The guy's I'm not. Not Subway trying one hundred percent, like that made sense. Well, I, and I'm like, not, I'm not trying to justify what he yeah. did. I'm just when saying it, there is a justification for it in a oh, sense. Well, okay, in in yeah. Arthur's own twisted mind, there is a justification for him because he lied to the police, said he bought the gun off of him when in fact he was given the gun instead, and for your own safety, you know, I got you right. You're my boy. And then later he finds out, oh no, he lied to the police, lied to the boss, said I I well, bought. Well, he, it he never him. said he lied to the police. They 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 that hadn't come up he lied to the boss but uh i don't think anyone told uh other than the fact that he had the gun at the children's hospital children's hospital which right. again he's saying was a prop yeah they hadn't i don't think they talked to that guy yet because he came and said the cops wanted to talk to me i want to make sure we get our story straight right okay. so he hadn't potato for the cops yet but yeah no no, no. Totally I, has, I get what you're saying like he, yeah. he totally like, he was the reason that arthur lost his job in the first place right arthur was looking at that well not not exactly i know that yeah. but but it didn't help the situation no, no 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 so it was like i don't that was one thing i don't get honestly what what there was no reason for him to give Arthur the gun unless he legitimately was like, hey, protect yourself. And then, of course, like when he could get in trouble for it, he, he you know, uh, yeah. lied about it. But otherwise, there's no there's no reason for it. Like, I thought oh. at first they were going to show something where, like, oh, if Arthur's fired, that guy gets more jobs or something. Right. But nothing like that happens. So nothing I don't like think that does happen. But I was... don't think the guy gave him the gun maliciously. I think he no, legitimately I... was like trying to be his friend, just like the little guy. Right. The uh, the, the uh, midget. Yeah. And or I'm sorry, the little person. The little person. Yeah. Because I guess Cause midget is he a lets slur. him go. Nowadays, whatever. It's not preferred terminology, I guess. But he lets the little guy go. He's like, you were the only one who was nice to me. He gives him a little kiss on the forehead like, like, yeah, or the top of the head. Oh, it was so I – was, I was sitting there every that, – that's what I was going to say about the violence. When it happens, it is like you're waiting for it to happen, but it's still fucking surprising. Yeah, like it's still like, oh like, my god! I you can't feel it. That you just feel happened. it. You feel it coming. It's almost like a jump scare, but in a good way. Yeah, like when he shoots the uh, shoots De Niro's character in the studio. It's this fucking perfectly framed, like just it, it's not like close up or anything. But you see, he shoots him right in the head. His head goes back. There's just a fucking massive gout of blood behind him, and then it's you just see the Joker with like a blood splattered on his face. Yeah. When he shoots the guys in the subway, it's kind of like they're beating on him and beating on him, and then all of a sudden, one of the, you hear the gun go off, and one of the guys is blown back. And then he shoots the other guy. Yeah. And he's basically, you know, he's got blood all over his face. And he shoots the one kid while he's trying to run away. And then, he, you know, it's just, it's it's like, it's sort of out of nowhere. Yeah. And when he stabs that guy, you see he's picked up the scissors. He put him in his back pocket. basically know what's coming. Like, you know, yeah, it's premeditated. Like, but, it's, it's like, boom, here it is. He's going to stab these people. Yeah, that's why, to me, it wasn't every other time... Like before that, he only 
had gotten violent with the guys who were beating him. Yeah. He hadn't... Sh- you could tell he was planning on killing himself. Yeah. Because they show... He, he rehearses essentially what he's going to do. Yeah. Where he's going to say, you know, you want to hear a joke, blah, blah, blah. And then he puts a gun to his... Puts the gun to his chin. And, you know, Mime's pulling the trigger. Actually, he does pull the trigger. It's oh, just yeah, not it's, loaded. Yeah. yeah. So, it's like, oh, so he's going to kill himself. I, you know. We, right, right, right. We yeah. know that's not going to be the case. But no. But that's his plan. So... Him killing that guy still, to me, kind of came out of nowhere in a way. Like, I thought the guy was going to try and bully him, or and, but he didn't at all. No. He just, Arthur just fucking... Blows him away. Pulls out the scissors and just starts fucking stabbing the shit out of oh, him. Oh, yes. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah and then, like... ba- oh, my God. Like I said, the violent, how just uh, violent and uh, just he's bashing the guy's and head visceral, against like... the wall. <laughs> yeah. It's like... And the whole time you can hear and see the 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 dwarf, the little person, in the corner, like, "Oh no, why? Oh god, why?" Like, it's it's, I I fucking it's great and horrible and amazing and all of it at the same time. It was just well done, well yeah. written. I mean, the cinematography was really good. I mean, it, yeah. this, this movie was well shot too. I think so. I honestly, there's there's great scenes that I like him on the stairs. I love that that sequence and yeah, stuff. where he's dancing down the stairs at the, towards yeah. the end. Um, like somebody oh, somebody on Reddit pointed out that like him kicking the dumpster mm-hmm. when he's having this tantrum and you have the Ferris wheel going in the background. Like oh, I, I didn't never even see that. Like that that you know when that you was think, great when he's just <laughs> he's just losing his fucking shit, man. And uh, what about what about the romance? Oh, oh yeah, my, like the, where he where is he, where he completely f- delusional uh, because he has like one positive interaction with her or whatever at some mm-hmm. point in the movie, and now he's falling in love with her. So he he creates this entire illusion in his head. Oh my god! Which was weird. <laughs> like at one point he follows her, so you're already like, oh man. What the fuck's going He's on He's going to kill her, isn't he? Or, because or, earlier in the know, movie, you see her mime the suicide. Yeah, the, you know, in the put elevator. a gun in my head and, you know, just kill me, please. Yeah. And then he does it back. And it's creepy. It is creepy, but... But, uh, sorry, I fucking yawning, but, um... I mean, that's one thing about the movie is that it was unsettling for a lot of it. That's, a, yes, that's one of the best parts about the movie. I mean, I... It, it just makes you unsettled. I loved it. I loved it, too. Like, like it, it wasn't unsettling in that... Oh my god! I don't want to fucking see this anymore. No, it, yeah, it made you just, unsettled. It's in almost like, it incited curiosity in it's you. It's almost. almost like a psychological. It's not quite psychological horror. Yeah, but it's it's that it's, it's that psychological uneasiness. I don't know how to. Yeah, it's it, definitely it, psychological. But you you're just seeing insanity. You, it makes you curious. It makes mm-hmm. you see. Well, what's going to happen next? What's he going to do now? He follows her for a while, and then there's a scene where she accuses him of following her, and he and it's like. She's okay with it, and that's the other thing is you don't know when that delusion starts. Was it right there, right, or was it after that? Did she legitimately like okay, you know, you know, oh, you didn't? She works at a bank, I think, right. and she joked about him coming in and robbing the place, and yeah. he's like, I got a gun, <laughs> and she laughs thinking he's joking, yeah, which I fucking love that scene. That was weird though, like, yeah. I, um. And then she walks away, you know, smiling or whatever. He oh, he invited her to the uh, comedy club. Com- I think that's that's where the delusion starts. You think because so? Because yeah. in the comedy club, in that scene, you're one. I was wondering why he he's you know obviously not getting the jokes out. He keeps on doing the uncontrollable laugh. Right. The jokes are terrible, but they end that scene with everyone laughing and clapping for him. Yeah. And she's clapping too and laughing. And that's when it starts where their relationship start, like quote unquote relationship, right? Where he's they're going out on dates and things. Um, I don't, and then they show him on the, the the late night TV show, yeah, De Niro, with De Niro's character. No one's laughing no. at those scenes, and when he tells the second joke, they they show the second clip. No one laughs. I think that's the moment. Yeah. That his delusion started where he thinks that he legitimately did have the crowd with him. And right, yeah. It was funny and she's 100% with him. And, and then it's revealed later on that she has no fucking idea basically who he is other than the guy who lives down the hall. Right. And she even asked him, do you want me to call someone? Is your mother home? Yeah. And he looks back at her and it's like, 
oh no yeah. and then the next scene it cuts to him sitting in his living room in his underwear smoking a cigarette and the, and the fucking paramedics are coming by I'm like oh no did he kill her I'm sure he did yeah, yeah. That's, that's one thing where they they didn't show that like whatever happened to her they right. never reveal so and her daughter is there too so yeah. you don't know if he murdered them both or what happened there I gotta say like I see why like Batman became the world's greatest detective because the detectives in the city suck ass. Oh, my God. They're like, hey, we want to talk to you. Hey, man, come on. Come on, buddy. Get back here. And then when they're chasing, like the scene you mentioned earlier where he's dancing down the steps. Yeah. And you, you see them at the top as he's going. And they just watched him like, uh, what the fuck? Yeah. And then they say, hey, Arthur, we got to talk. And he starts running off and they chase after him. They get onto that train. Mm-hmm. And he accidentally shoots that civilian, and they all beat the shit out of both of them for killing the guy. Yeah, well, it's that, I think, is the real thing that starts the riot. Yeah. Is that all the people are going to protest yeah, they're, they're, they're Thomas down. Wayne's uh, event or right. whatever. Or no, that was – no, that's after the event. Um, that's the that, – That's the date. That's, that's before he goes on the show. Yeah, that's right yeah. before he goes on the show. So I think the, – so the riot started they're, they're because going, the person was killed. Yeah. And then they beat the shit out of the cops, and then he's he goes on the TV and shoots the dude, and the riot just kicks off even more. Yeah, like it's 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 even more of a rager at yeah. that point. You know, you got shit on fire, you got things getting broken into, you got cars and yeah. cop cars and everything flipped over. It's just it gets insane. And I, I mean, the movie was seriously fantastic, though. Yeah. Um, it was very dark, um, but not overly dark i don't know how to it describe takes it takes a while to get there like i said like for it's the a very slow first, it's a slow build-up first half of this movie you you feel for this guy you're watching his descent into madness you think yeah and then realize oh no he's he's he, been mad the whole time right and that that doesn't sit there and change the fact that all these horrible things did eventually happen to him and i yeah, he, he i would a say bad lot in life but. i would say that um he was always fucked up but I would say that these events did push him that that, that much farther, it, especially losing his mother, you know, and, and her having the stroke and then him killing her after he found out that she basically lied to him. Well, he apparently he's also <laughs> repressed a lot of things because he gets uh, this. There's a scene where he gets his goes to find his records or his mother's mental institution records because she was in, uh, institutionalized right he finds that out and he steals them and because the guy he's talking to is basically going to give him the information opens her records reads it a little bit and is like oh the the woman and he's like yeah arrested for and the guy gets this look on his face like oh i'm not i can't tell I, i'm not gonna give this guy this you show you know it's bad yeah he closes up and he's like hey man i uh i can't let this out you want to bring here a sign for it bring the paperwork yeah i'll, I'll give it to you blah 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 yeah and obviously beck peck isn't gonna leave without it oh, so no, he grabs no, no. it and he, steals it yeah and what you find out is not only did she obviously lie like she paranoid delusional of thinking thomas wayne is right her, right baby mama or baby um, daddy she adopted um the joker adopted back fleck whatever fleck. Fleck. arthur fleck yeah adopted fleck. him whatever um let her boyfriend abuse him for a years apparently for a yeah. long time like he was like seven or eight or older yeah and the boyfriend was abusing him and then she was institutionalized so there's like this is all stuff that he would know but has repressed. Yeah. And that's the point where he's like, he just fucking loses it. Yeah. Goes and fucking kills his mother. And so, I mean, he's even more, he's fucked up on like a, like he's a whole new level. Almost. He's got mental disorder. Like he's got disorders, obviously probably from, um, so like psychological issues stemming from medical reasons, like chem, you know, fuck, fucked up in the head. Yeah, and then yeah. having those child, like, that childhood yeah. fucked him up. I'm sure that, you know, he, he must have, but they don't, you know, where was he between when his mother's in incarcerated? Where, yeah. you know, where was he taken care of? What was an orphanage or anything? Why did he come back? All of that is vague in yeah. this movie. So it's like. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't ever reveal that. And I think that that is, um, or how long was he institutionalized and for what for? I I, I loved it. I think that leaving that 
a, a blank slate almost is is probably what kept this movie like like I said, like how it gave Joker an origin without disrupting his mystery. Yes. Because they don't sit there and reveal a lot of things that you would think they would in an origin story. Exactly. Like they just show you he's there. He's already fucked up and crazy. He's already the Joker. He just shows the events that pushes him to that point where he, he embraces The one bad it. day. Yeah, the one bad it's day. It's not one bad day. It was a couple. Okay. It was like a week. It was a whole bad life. Let's be real. But. <laughs> but yeah, like it was. It was. <laughs> It was good in that sense that they they did that. Um, they did it well. They they yeah. navigated that without hitting any major hurdles. Um, I, I I loved it. Um, like you said, it's good. Go see it, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, check this movie out. Um, I don't remember the exact quote. There was because uh, this is directed by the guy who did the Hangover series. Um, Which is surprising to me because you look at like the kind of movies The Hangover are, you're thinking, is he really going to be able to pull this off? Apparently. And well, apparently, yes, he very much could. Uh, where is – I thought it would be the top thing, but most of it is um, reviews. Yeah. So I saw something where the guy who wrote it um, – Yeah. He had had this big backlash thing going on where he'd said that the reason he decided to do this movie is because uh, he can't – he doesn't feel like he can do comedies anymore the way he used to right. because of the trigger cancel culture. Um, oh, yeah. So he decided that since he can't do that, he's going to do – like do a comic book movie and turn it on its head. Yeah. And it's one of the things the Joker says at the end of the movie is he's talking about comedy. And it, it, it's it's weird because it's coming from the Joker. Yeah. So the person you're not supposed to agree with where he's arguing with the the show host yeah. about what's funny and what's comedy. Like, this is comedy to me. And he's like, it doesn't matter if you find it funny. This is my this is comedy or or whatever it's like it's that whole argument about like how things are subjective yeah, yeah. and and like a uh, well like um who says you can't tell a joke and and just the the constant thing that comedians like um George Dave Carlin Chappelle, and all them guys yeah i mean George Carlin even had a bit where he talks about rape being funny and it's it's yeah, he, way he he basically talks about how you know anything can be funny anything can be funny it's just how you frame the joke exactly what is the exaggeration but George George Carlin also talked about um not punching down yes. which is something that any comedian should be able to do right punching down yeah we're going to punch down if you make a funny joke if you make a funny joke about starving pygmies in africa it's a funny joke yeah but it's the Joker at the end of the movie who's saying all that stuff. Yeah. At the same time, the the director is it was basically saying the same thing, in a way. And I I just thought it was really interesting that like there's that part of the movie where's that fight over comedy and it's just that whole uh, that whole ending. Is yeah. So I mean, good when yeah. he's ranting on the uh, talk show. I just I, part of me dislikes. How humanizing they made the Joker in this Todd movie. Todd Phillips, that's what it was. Like, like only because of, of like me growing up mm-hmm. and seeing the Joker in, in the light that he was. He was just mm-hmm. a crazy person with put clown makeup on, and then in some some iterations he he fell into a vat, and that vat turned him into that. In some iterations, it was a gas that turned him into that. And I think, yeah, <laughs> it's like here's. Honest to God, my <laughs> feelings of it, like like in that sense, are I can separate it from the other Jokers because right, is, right, this is a very different like Gotham. Uh, this is a very different universe, essentially. Yeah, where those Jokers are more comic book origin. This one's like realistic. Uh, I I put this in the same vein as the Nolan Joker, right? And I like this. I like the way they did this origin. You don't get an origin or anything with Nolan Joker. He's just a guy who comes out of nowhere and is. I mean, he had crazy. A, yeah, he had a bad life too. Um, I well, you don't know if he did. He says that's true. Do you actually, know you don't how, like three different stories about getting the scars. Yeah. So we, you have no idea what's truth or not. This to me was better. 
it was a better in was a better realistic Joker than the Nolan Joker. Yeah, I loved Heath Ledger's acting. I loved how it played out in that movie. Yeah, but if you're going to do quote unquote realism, this is so much beyond better. This is like yeah, uh, for a sure. thousand times because right. again, he doesn't have it all together. He's not. He's not like completely composed, and this like mad genius and everything yet. I guess I mean maybe he eventually gets there and kind of becomes that Joker, <laughs> but he's 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 in no way near there in this movie. Yeah, um, it, it it is good in that sense. Like I, 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 that that's the sense I put it in that same boat, and I end up liking it. Like I think I like it more than Heath Ledger's Joker in that way. Um, I mean, I, I'm still going to sit there and say the way that Heath Ledger played Joker. Yeah, I, I think I like it more it's just because, because it's the, just because it's of how Joker. Yeah, it's it, a fully realized Joker. It, it just, yeah, just because of how chaotic Joker Year One. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got, you got, you got, you got advanced Joker versus rookie Joker. You know, and, and like looking at yeah. that, like yeah, that Heath Ledger's being a more fully realized, fully fleshed out. More embracing his uh, chaotic, insane the, side, the thing whereas is, this Joker is still learning that hey, this chaos, this craziness, this is what I am. This is yeah. what I like. The thing about Heath Ledger, about those Nolan movies in general, yeah, because um, it, it it was a big problem I had with the Dark Knight is you're trying to do realism, yes. but everything is still way too perfect. Yeah. Like, the Joker is at 100% throughout that entire movie in complete control. Yes. And of, of every aspect. Yeah. Like, like this like even Joker aspects you didn't even think he would be in control of, you just didn't really yeah. realize, oh, yeah, he's no, he had... He's in a room of thugs and killers, yeah. and somebody steps up to him and he... <laughs> pencil trick, boom. And it's it. Like, yeah. there's no one who, like, if anyone else fought him, you believe that he would kill them. And yes. it wouldn't be a problem. Right. Which is very, very unrealistic. Right. Whereas this Joker, this movie was so, it, it was real. It was a fucking crazy person. Like, he, uh, I don't know. It, I, I just, I liked, if you're going for real, this is how you do real. Yes. Uh, and the Nolan movies, you know, were tried, but they weren't, they didn't, they didn't go all the way. Yeah. So, like, it's that kind of like, if they ever talk about, like, a realistic comic book movie now, somebody else tries it, this is, this is the bar that has been set for you. And it's Good luck. very, very high. Yeah. Cause, like, he takes a comic book movie, he takes a comic book origin, and he makes it believable. He makes it real. Mm -hmm. He makes it feel like, holy shit, this could happen. This really could happen. I I, I don't want it to happen. No, obviously, yeah. it's um, not. It's not something that we should be doing it. But it's like it's oh, almost frightening because it's a lot. It's still, like I said, comparable to the real world, where yes. the breakdown of uh, of any type of assistance for mentally ill people, where he go, he's going to this therapist oh, or caseworker, I guess. Social worker. Social worker. And you, the first scene after it pans away from him talking to her yes. is that her desk and everything is just stacked to the ceiling with paperwork. Yeah. With, you know, it's there's other mess. cases and other yeah. people. Yeah. And so she's, she's, she's way trying overworked. to deal with all sorts of stuff. And it's just like. And even then, she still seemed not good at it because it's revealed later on when he accused, like is like you're not listening at all yeah it apparently it she's just you know asking the same things is what it seems like but yeah she's not like you see in some other movies where the case was like what's going on okay uh let me see uh yeah it yeah. wasn't like she wasn't yeah. And he, he even she says, tried. Yeah. She even says she admits she's like they they don't give a fuck about me and they don't give a fuck about you. Yeah, and because they it closes even that little teeny ray of like light in in, in the world of uh, or in you know someone's life that has these mental issues. They cut funding to it. Yeah, so he can't even get that. He yep. can't get medication. Yep. <laughs> He can't get support, the support that he needs. So, yeah, yeah he fucking... Which was barely holding him together before. Right, yeah. He was just barely making it as it was. And now yeah. he's now he's really going to go off the fucking deep end. And then he sits there, he runs out of... You know, he, he's no longer able to get his medication. He's no longer able to get his therapy. His mother has a stroke because two uh, fucking detectives come and ask her questions that cause her to hyperventilate and lose her shit. 
Well, yeah. I think that bleeds into she's her mental health that she right. never got any more care that she should have been given. But but that was like yeah. the closest he had to yeah. a support network was his mother, and now he doesn't have that. So and by then he had already had the delusions, yeah, of yeah. a relationship with someone else that had no fucking idea other than he's the guy down the hall. <laughs> he had no fucking idea that he even really existed beyond the crazy guy down the hall. Yeah. Um, so it's like, oh, okay, great. I uh, fuck, man. Such a good movie. It's what? so there's so many layers to this movie that every time I sit there and think, I have nothing more to talk about, then something new pops into my head. Like, oh wait, what about this? Yeah. What about that? So I mean, yeah, like this was a this is, it's a good DC flick. Yep. Holy shit. <laughs> When they're not trying to do the – it makes me more excited for the new Batman movie. And I know – and I don't I don't even really want it to be attached to this. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't think they could do a movie. I think they could do a yeah. Batman in this universe. I think so too, But I don't yeah. want it because I like the, the – I like comic book Batman. Yeah. Um, this was great. And I, they could do this. I could see this working, like, do this with other characters. Right. Get to a fucking Harvey Dent Two-Face. Yeah. You could do, I mean, you could, you you could, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't no, know. Harvey Dent's a little bit, like, Two-Face. Harvey Dent's the only one that I could think. Like, you, you don't do a Penguin movie. No. Here. No, not like this. Because I mean, Penguin Harvey's, is wholly unrealistic. Yes. He's just uh, well. I mean, I mean all the again, Penguin is just a just a thug. And then again, they can he's, get Daniel DeVito to just play a rich, him. Just a rich, do it again. I'd, I'd watch. Fuck it. it, dude. Like he's gotten even smaller since then. He could work fine. I mean, what if they did? What if they did decide that this movie works so well that they said fuck it and fully full on kept it going? But I don't. I don't want to see at the same time. <laughs> This Joker, although I don't know, I don't know if I want to see this continue and be the like oh, the me. the um the 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 Joker to a Batman, like yeah, like I can't see this Joker making a Harley Quinn. I mean, okay, that's one thing that popped into my head early in the movie is when he's having the illusion delusional relationship with the yeah. chick. Like, is she going to become his Harley Quinn? Yeah, no. And that was my, I had that thought too. And then I like, I was like, nah, no, I can't, come on. I no, can't, even really? by the end when he's the Joker. Yeah. I, was, I can't see him with a Harley. I can't see him. No, no. Cause he's not that, like I said, he's not that put together. He's not that Joker. Yeah. yeah. He's not, he, and even by the end, he's not that Joker. Although no. the very end of the movie, when they show him in the, uh, he's been institutionalized again at Arkham, uh-huh. and he's talking to a um, another social another worker, social worker, which I there. think might be the same social worker from the beginning of the flick. Maybe I don't. I, remember. I think it was like uh, I was trying. I could not focus enough at that point because yeah. I was so like it was just so well done. I, I just I could not wait to see what happened with him in Arkham. Yeah, and they did what I was hoping they were do, would do, and that. He's talking to her, and I don't even fucking remember the conversation. Um, no idea what the fuck I think talking he about. He says something about oh, one, yeah. one bad day. Maybe um, that's what no. He, he says, says something like, uh, "She's like he's laughing. She's like something funny. He's like I was just thinking of a joke. Like oh yeah, would you tell me the joke? He's like you wouldn't, you wouldn't get, get it. it. Yeah, and then." It, there's like a long pause or something, and then he's walking away, yeah, out with no restraints or anything, and he's just there's leaving blood, bloody footprints. Yeah, was like, oh no! And he's walking down the hall, and it's yeah. like, okay, what's is this his delusion or something? He walks down the hall, turns the corner, and you see him run back with an orderly chasing him, and then run the other way. So I was like, oh no, this maybe this is the Joker. Maybe uh. this this does go into that perfect because. That's the Joker. He's just murdered someone just because. Yeah. And is escaped, essentially. Yeah. He's being chased by the Arkham um, uh, orderlies. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, my God. this Maybe this <laughs> could be the Joker. Maybe this this could be a content. Maybe he now is that. that, that uh, and I think, the la- I think there's a laugh. He's laughing the whole time. Yeah. Sounds about right. And I was like, maybe this could be the crown, uh, the, the clown prince of crime. Like, that. That. I was like, yeah, maybe, God, maybe like that's so, but it was weird. I don't know. I, I kind of want to see more at the same time. I don't know if you, if they, if it, if it would make sense. Um, I, I feel like they could probably do it, but I, this is so good. Yeah. 
I think a sequel might might sully it in a way. In a way, yeah. It's like, like, like you're going to dilute it a little bit more. You're going to mm-hmm. sit there and uh, because if right, you continue, see, yeah. you're continuing it as Batman, right? The movie, Batman movie, right? Right. It has so, to be. You don't need to do the origin because right. obviously the origin's done. Like, yeah, that part's done. Like that, was, the origin of the Batman was also taken care of. I don't want to with see... the origin of the Joker. Like they, they, in this, in this, in this origin, the Joker, uh, offhandedly created it's the, the catalyst. Batman. Yeah, yeah, like he, he, he is that catalyst that led up to the events that created the Batman to begin with. So it's like. All right, you could probably get away with with doing a Batman. But the thing is, because of how realistic this is, yeah. I think the, to do that, you have to show this not the whole thing. Right. But the end and I mean in that case you would do the origin again. Yeah. You showed this through Bruce Wayne's eyes. Yes. And then you do him, but I don't I don't like that's got that's basically Parts of Gotham is like you're showing the, him kind of growing up. Right, And right. then at some point he decides to go off and become a fucking ninja. Yeah. I guess. And that's sort of interesting. And then – but like to do it realistically, you would have to show the shit they showed us already in Batman Begins. He goes, right. He goes, trains, really meets the League of Shadow maybe, fucking trains on top of the mountain, you know, to hone his skills. The yeah. And all that. And then no, it's like – just sleeping. I mean, I'm sure it would be good, right? Probably, but I don't. I don't want to see that. I want to see Batman. Yeah, right? I want to see him show up back in Gotham. Yes, and start beating up fucking thugs and criminals. It's it's again. It's why I think Batman has to show up before the Joker or Ivy or the Penguin or Two Face or any other characters. Right. I think you should have Batman first, which is why I'm excited to see Year One. Suppo- or the next Batman movie being done by uh, who's oh, gonna have the star from um, uh, that vampire movie is playing Bruce Robert Wayne. Pattinson? Yeah, he's yeah. playing Bruce Wayne. Which look at the the dude looks like Bruce Wayne. He does. Like it, it, I my envision of a Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And it's supposed to be very early Batman, so I'm assuming it's probably going to be like a year one story. Right. So I want to see him beating up fucking mobsters and shit. Yeah. So I'm mobsters I'm down and gangsters and thugs and idiots yeah. on the street, like street level crime. I rather think, than like city level threatening crime or world threatening yeah, crime. Yeah, yeah. I really hope for the sake of that movie though, that they didn't didn't decide to also do a Joker origin story at the same time. Yeah. Because if his main antagonist is the Joker right after this movie yeah. and it's not this Joker. <laughs> It's gonna be That's weird. not going to work yeah, out it's, well. it's just not going to be very good. Like, it's just, I mean, it'll be good, but the whole time you're like, but that Joker, man. That Joker How awesome was, so was good. that? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. It, it could probably be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It could. It, it, they might even just do gangsters. I mean. Yeah. Like I said, I mean. The you know. first fucking Batman Begins. I, I, I enjoyed that movie a lot. And the fucking villain is Scarecrow. Yeah. And it's like, and he's not even fucking really. Scarecrow. He's just a dude who invents a fear toxin. Yeah, he's just a dude that, that uses his knowledge yeah. of, of yeah psychology and chemical effects on the brain to uh, just... And then it's Ray Shot Ghoul, which is a good villain. Right. I did not like the way they did him in uh, uh, in that movie, though. Right. Because I like I, I really think Ray Shot Ghoul is best done as the undying comic book villain that he is. Yeah. Um, the the unaging, undying, like he, like absolute master. Uh, so I I don't know I, I I don't know what you do with that movie, but I fucking need a Batman movie now more than ever. Yeah, I need that. I need something. I I just I don't know, man. Uh, I I'm I'm torn in the same way you are. Like I want to see this continue. I want to see this Joker antagonizing Batman, but at the same time. I don't know if it would work. I don't know if it would. Yeah, like, I don't know. Would it work? Because you once you start introducing capes and masks, it the realism side of it, it just seems, I, I don't know. I don't know if it makes any sense. I like that they set this movie in the, what, 60s? 
Uh, yeah. It's I, black I, and white television, the cars. So, I mean, it would be even earlier. Like, I don't know. But that's the thing with God, with, with the Batman universe is that, like, they time have... Time is very ambiguous. They have, like, super... T- they have, like, really great technology and yeah. then dirigibles flying yeah. over the city and things like that in, like, yeah. the animated series. And, yeah. It's, so, it's I mean, weird. But it definitely... To me, it felt like... I mean, maybe it was the 50s. Yeah. I Maybe. guess fifties makes sense. I I don't know I don't know when when, it's, did, it's, when did we get color televisions basically because I was watching to see if maybe they were just broke and had a, a black and white television right um but maybe they weren't standard yet I don't know I I couldn't tell you man like it was very weird uh uh sixties and eighties yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, it could have been set in the 60s. 60s, 60s, 70s. I mean, you know, you got to, like, so Bruce Wayne would be, he's like, what, eight or nine, ten so, yeah, in that movie like that. or he's, something he's, like that. He's definitely, what, Another, how old is he when he, when his parents are killed, you know? Like, exactly. That's, that's about how old Another, he would be. Another, what, 10, 15 years for him to become Batman? Yeah. And yeah. then comes back. But that's 10 or 15 years added on to the Joker's age. And if they kept the timeline straight then he's way way older than Batman yeah that, by the time he's like he's a fucking he he's got to be in his 50s right by the time batman's just starting out which is one problem a lot of people i saw were pointing out like yeah like, that's joaquin, what i said one of the things i said too yeah, like joaquin phoenix himself is in his 40s or something yeah. right so like if we go by that timeline and let's say bruce wayne is eight yeah. And let's say it does take him 15 years to become Batman. That means Joaquin Phoenix is, is almost 60 now. And he's a 60-year-old. It, it's happened in the comics before where the Joker is typically older than Batman. Right. But – Not it, that much older, no, though, right? No, that's, like, that's excessive. Like that's, that's insane, right? Yeah. So I would say uh, – I, I don't know. Like, like Joker would be maybe in his 20s would be more realistic. Yeah, but he's definitely not in this movie. At least I mean, he could be because he is emaciated too, so it could give him that that look of being well, I guess that's possible. Cuz I mean, he's very malnourished. They never like, they, they, they never, make a point of that. Yeah. They make a point of that several times in the movie that this Joker is not all there like we said yeah. and that he's very malnourished. He's just he's just super really fucking skinny. Yeah, he doesn't take good care of himself no. like at all. So it, and he smoke he chain smokes, which mm-hmm. you know, like we said, was a tick of and his does, mental illness. It so does that does age you, so. that does age you. So yeah, it's very possible that he this might could be, be in his like early thirties. Yeah, he maybe could late be twenties. He could be twenty eight to thirty three or so in that age range, but look like he's in his forties because I I've also I mean, seen that, that in real that's life too. Damn near his fucking fifties. <laughs> but that's much much better than that him being true. almost 60, 65, which like is retirement age. So it's yeah. like come on, Joker's man. retiring by the time. <laughs> Batman shows up on scene. Like, uh, like, yeah, like, could you could you see that? Like, he, like, Batman busts into a door. He's like, all right, uh, Joker's like, you know what? I'm retiring. The Fuck this. One thing I was thinking. I'm going to go thinking, draw on Social Security and work at McDonald's for the rest of my life. I was thinking if they do that, if you continue, and this has gone on way too long, but I don't care. If oh, they no, continue no, that, one, Keep going. one way they can do that is but it, it it he was he's almost too famous for this to really work. Yeah. Um, you have that stuff happen, and then <coughs> Batman comes and is essentially the thing that causes the Joker to like snap back. So, sort of the same way it happens in the Dark Knight, right? Um, comic and in in the in the the animated movie is everyone's basically all the heroes are gone. Right. Batman quit for a long time. Joker right. had been locked up and had been comatose. Right. Batman comes back and starts. Um, being a hero in Gotham again and right. Joker wakes up essentially and comes back and murders the t- a talk show host and the entire audience with gas. And, and that's how he basically comes back as the criminal. And that, right. by the way, awesome fucking movies if anyone's not watched them or read those comic books. But you could almost do something where like Gotham's forgot. Like they remember the riots. Right, right, The clown right. riots or something. But they basically – you could have it be where they've basically forgotten the Joker because he never did anything – he murdered someone on live television, but he wasn't going around gassing right, yeah. crowds. He wasn't murdering hundreds or anything. He's He was a, cra- a, a, a murderer, a crazy person who killed a few people. Right. And, I mean, you could have that almost be forgotten 
and then Batman comes up and oh my god he's the 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 um the gangsters and mobsters that have taken over in the wake of these riots cuz you know for 15 years had control and right, you know right. the corrupt government and all that blah 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 Batman's doing that and that causes the Joker to you like you, you could do even a scene where he's sitting in his cell or in yeah. like you know a, a a a lunchroom or something yeah and then he just starts laughing yeah and that can be the trigger and i mean you could do th- that Maybe that works. Maybe, maybe that's it how does. You do it. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. I could see that. I could see that working pretty well. If and they... Gotham not in Gotham, essentially forgetting what happened just fifteen years ago. Alice, right, and then you. Could I mean, which is very Joker. possible. That's a lot of time. A lot of crazy shit can happen. Oh, in that and time. especially for a city like New York, which is basically yeah. what Gotham is. Um, based on based yeah. on, and, and how just quickly they you know they'll forget and. <clears throat> Yeah, move on, move on from shit. Like I don't know, dude. I like I, I just I wrote the movie for him. I want royalties. <laughs> I wrote the movie for him. But I, I mean, that's way more you could do it. I was gonna say the one storyline I've wanted to see in one of these movies forever is um is uh Mr. Freeze. It's yeah. something where it was so perfect in the animated series, right? Uh, and then they did a movie, like yeah, a, a TV yeah. movie for him. I just love his story. It's it's. It's insane. It's not insane. It's it's I, it's way more like it, it's on this same level of um, you feel for the guy, right? And then he goes, and he's still like a villain. He's still freezing people to death. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Obviously not in the animated series, but that's the implication. I mean, at that point, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Unless he's somehow you're frozen solid. You you can't survive that. You, yeah, you, there is no cryogenics. <laughs> yes. like, it's not going to save you, right? Like you're you're fucking dead. <laughs> you you now have frostbite all everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like like all of the water in your cells has expanded and become ice and have torn you to shreds. Because that's and how it works. Also, your core temperatures like fallen way below possible yeah. survival uh, level, survival levels. You're you're dead. You can't breathe. You're brain dead. Yeah. Your, your heart is not beating anymore. Your heart has stopped. Your blood is you're not dead. circulating because it's ice. Like yeah. you're fucking dead, dude. <laughs> That's how it works. But yeah, I've always wondered. I, I I'd love it if we could get a big screen version of Mr. Freeze. I don't know how you do it, but and Clayface too. Yeah, Clayface would Clayface be cool. Clayface is fucking cool. Um, Riddler. See, I'm. The the rumor right now is that Jonah Hill's playing the Riddler. I could in the new Batman. Okay, yeah, maybe because obviously he's he, he's not fat anymore. The dude <clears throat> right, lost yeah, no. a ton of weight. Yeah. So the first thing was, oh, he's playing Penguin, and then like I guess that was that <laughs> yes. that was too obvious. So now people are the rumor is he's playing the Riddler. Right. Um, and I don't remember the other like. There's a lot of there's a lot of rumors that have come out right about that movie now. Right. Um, but. Like I said, I can't. It's 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 the next DC movie I'm really looking forward to. Like obviously, Wonder Woman two is coming <laughs> out eventually. That one looks that like that movie. Wonder Woman was great. I hope the sequel ends up living up to it. Yeah, set in the eighties. Right. Um. Right. Which is the one thing I'm disappointed in. I wanted wonder. I wanted a. Even though it wasn't good, I still wanted a sequel. I wanted her in modern times. I wanted basically like her story, what she's doing after the Justice League. Right. But they're not doing that. Um, I would be. I think that would be better. Yeah. Honestly, that's what I was hoping for. Whatever. Right. Um, I feel confident they'll be able to pull another good one off. Because I mean, yeah, they, they're getting the same director back and all that, so I think it'll be fine. Um. Oh man, the Batman's not coming out till twenty twenty one. Ah, that's that's a year and a half away, man. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Supposedly well, there's gonna be a Catwoman. If we get a Riddler, that'd uh, be all right. Uh, Slate another Selena Kyle movie. Mm-hmm. Who uh, are they? Do they know who they're getting to play Catwoman? Um, right now it looks I mean, like. Um, I sit there. The think- short list inclu- includes Tessa Thompson, uh-huh. Lupita Nyong'o, uh-huh. uh, and more. Let's see who the and more is. Uh, uh, I could definitely see Tessa Thompson doing it pretty well. She's a fucking badass. Those two are the most notable names, so I guess right. everyone else is probably like a newer actress or whatever. Right. Um, but 
either one of them. They're fucking amazing in their movies. I they, this is another. This would be another case of characters, pe- actors, actresses, jumping <laughs> back and forth between Marvel and DC because DC, yeah. they both. One of them plays uh, Valkyrie, and then the other one plays. Um, the head Black Panther's uh, all female warriors. Yeah, uh, his Kingsguard is basically the Kingsguard. Yeah, I can't remember the, what their fucking name is. Okay, um, I don't know. I don't have anything else to say at this point. Um, yeah, man, go see the movie. It was fun, fantastic. Uh, go play Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. It is also fantastic, but for an entirely different set of reasons. Um, we, we, we enjoyed both those things and, uh, I don't know. I don't have anything else to say. You know, like, share, subscribe, yeah. uh, give us a comment, give us money on Patreon. <laughs> I started posting the episodes on Facebook again. Is the site still down? Yes. The site's okay. still down for the moment. Uh, you can still get the podcast through Google play and iTunes yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, and obviously we <coughs> upload the video on, uh, fa- YouTube's. YouTube's, YouTube, not Facebook, <laughs> not on Facebook, but I no. do link it to Facebook. There you go. That's all that matters. Uh, but anyway, for the ungodly geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. <laughs> Fuck EA. Always. Especially now. And Ubisoft. Fuck those assholes, too. Oh, Ubisoft. <laughs>